Hello and welcome to the live commentary where I explain my approach to leveling in episode 5. An episode in Fantasy Star is like a content expansion, so episode 5 is essentially the 5th content expansion. We'll get the 6th at some point in the next few months, but right now we're in episode 5, and here is how I level. You notice that I'm a level 81 ranger, and my subclass is a level 87 hunter. Now, typically as you level up, your subclass is limited to a maximum of level 70 uh, through leveling your main class. So as I level up Ranger, Hunter also levels at half the rate, but it caps out at 70. I'll of course teach you how to get to these higher levels, but for now I want you to understand that to get your subclass to level 90, at some point you have to main your subclass. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right here. So I'm gonna type in a chat command slash ms2 and it switches to my second loadout which is a hunter main loadout so now we look hunter is level 87 ranger is level 81 since ranger is above level 70 which is that cap on the subclass i will get no experience towards my subclass but i will get experience towards my main class ultimately i want to main ranger and sub hunter so to get the sub hunter to 90, I have to main it. And the best way to get experience is something called Buster Quest. But before we get into any of that, let's get you to these high levels. So, uh, let's walk around the ship real quick. Uh, I think the best way to approach low level leveling from zero is to do client orders or check your visiphone to see if you qualified for any campaign rewards just for logging into the game. Sometimes you will see triboosts, which are a triple, um, a, let's say a three type booster, one for experience, one for rare drop, and one for meseta earned, which is in-game currency. So sometimes a campaign will give you an experience ticket. Let me see if I have any tickets. Yeah, here we go, I have some tickets. So this one gives me 100,000 experience, this one gives me 1 million XP. These are pretty good for getting those first initial levels out of the way, but if you're not geared to push yourself the rest of the way, you are gonna struggle a little bit. So now we're in the gate area, this is where most new players would recognize. Client orders are a fantastic way to get those first couple levels, so what you can do is you can talk to these NPCs, like Hans over here, and he has all these different missions, Destiny players would know these as bounties, that you do for Masetta and experience. So feel free to chip along those, learn to play the game, and get those done passively as you do something. In fact, don't even worry about a strict guide at this point, just have fun. Look at the list of things to do, uh, like expeditions, try out each of these worlds and explore them. Like Forest Expedition, you'll be going on normal, all except quest, except in current block. And this is a very important thing right here. We're going to scroll down to client orders on that globe tab, and we're going to select orders that can be accepted in the fields of ongoing quest. And right there, it shows me all the client orders that work during this Forest Expedition. So I could take all of those, and while I explore the forest and kill enemies and stuff, I am passively working towards these. And so then let's say I finished my forest expedition, I come back out, I walk over to Hans since I took some of his client orders, I turn them in, and I level up. And as you level up, you're gonna head over to the class counter. The class consultant over here is very helpful for distributing your skill points. Though big red flag, big mistake players do is they chunk points into anything without reading or without looking up a skill guide. This game has been out for 12 years, so a lot of the players have optimized the guides and min-maxed it, so it's very very nice to look at a skill tree guide ahead of time so that you don't make mistakes. It costs real life money to undo these mistakes, unless you're patient. Occasionally, the same way I showed you all that stuff on the Visiphone, occasionally you are able to get what's called a skill reset pass. I might have one here. If not, I'll switch the ship one. No, I do. 
reset all skill tree paths. These are given out seasonally, I think. So even if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can make any perk selection really work, but you'll be struggling a lot more than you have to. Uh, the second thing to mention is if you're, <clears throat> if you're starting off, do not feed your mag random items. Next thing you need to look up is mag feeding guide. This is your floating shoulder companion that gives you stats. So mine gives me range stats, level 200 range stats. 200 is the max. So it's very, 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 very helpful. I'm going to keep that short. So two things before we even get started. Skill tree guide, mag feeding guide. So now we're distributing our points, right? As we level up, we rinse, repeat. We level up, we go out exploring again, we take client orders, rinse, repeat. Once we're anywhere from, let's say, level 40 to 50-ish, after you get bored of exploring and whatnot, now we get into the real leveling. This is going to take place in something called advanced quests. Some of these require... Uh, I think is it level 55, level 40 on one of these? Jack, correct me if I'm uh, wrong here. Uh, you know what? I do have a low level. Let's go check my low level to be absolutely sure. So I have a fresh character here just to verify what I'm saying. Okay, let's go select Advanced Quest, if I even can. No, I have not unlocked Advanced Quest yet, because I'm not high enough level. Well, let me go chunk an Experience Booster here, and see what happens. I'll use a 1 mil tick for the, for the video. Alright, so now we're level 35. I think I need to talk to Coffee to unlock them. Maybe I have to talk to Affin to unlock it. Let me double check. Yes, okay. So you have to talk to Affin. He's your right-hand man when you start the game. After leveling up, we're going to go over to Coffee. What do you need? And she's going to have a lot of things. She's going to give us our mag. Cool. So he, she uh, just gave us our mag. We're going to talk to Echo afterwards to get a free feeding kit. And we have to listen to some explanations here to unlock our character's full capabilities. Uh, coffee kind of gatekeeps a lot of your character progression so after almost anything you do go back and double check that you don't have anything to take from officer kofi so here's difficulty trial one which is the whole reason i hopped on this character you get the hard difficulty permit very hard permit let's not turn that in yet this one is subclass permit. So this is the most important thing you need for leveling a low level character. You want to access your subclass as early as possible because like I said uh, at the very beginning of the video, your subclass caps out at level 70. So the sooner you can start chunking experience on it, the better. So that when you eventually main it to max it at 90, it's more self-sufficient. It's higher level. So let's go see if I have advanced quest yet. Not yet. I still think I need to talk to Kofi then. Clear a practice quest. I should have had that done on the account already, so it should just auto clear. I highly advise that if you're brand new to the game, do the practice quest, read the menus, read any pop up box that gives you information. Uh, there is a very helpful resource at this counter, uh, Leotina who has a lot of good guides. I'm very serious, this is an MMO. Read, it helps. Let's accept this hard difficulty permit, see if I have advanced quest yet. So chat saying advanced quest requires level 40. That's cool with me. Let's pop another one mil. 
Now I'm level 44. Still no advance quest, so let's talk to Kofi now. Still nothing yet, so let's get our subclass really quick. It says defeat a Garongo and defeat a Fulgerin. Uh, let's go do the Garongo first. I believe if we go to time attack, running maneuver is Nevarious 1. And does it want me to kill them on hard? I think it does. Let's double check just to be sure. Nope, it just says defeat him. All right, cool. We're going to do that on normal. Time attack. The various one, normal. Good luck. So at this point, you're still doing client orders. You're still turning them in, exploring, having fun. And now you get to unlock your subclass. So we're just gonna spray down some enemies real quick. And once we finally clear some enemies, a Garongo will spawn. And that's a real quick kill on a Garongo. For the Fodrin, I just go to the volcanic caves and run around until I find one. So we should see our Garongo very soon. Congrats on that Arts League win, Chad. Oh, there's our Garongo. And there we go. That objective done. Uh, now to quick exit, we're going to quest info, quest abandon, abandon quest. Should send us out to the lobby. Hey, coffee has an update. Maybe I just had to reset the area. Yep. There it is, there is the advanced quest notice. So that's all it was, is I used tickets so I had to leave and re-enter the area. So because I hit, I believe level 40, advanced quest open up. So let's search this real quick. It's gonna be under sub quest, advanced quest. And now we finally get to see what level requirement it is. All right, so there it goes. Conditions for acceptance. That's the tab I was looking for the whole time. It says level 55 and up. So these are your tickets. At level 40, you're doing very hard to 55. And at level 55, you can pretty much stop. You have the option to stop. You do not have to do super hard advanced quest anymore unless you want to bolster your subclass a little bit before heading into buster quest. And I'm about to show you what Buster Quests are by hopping back to the other character. If you wanted to finish out that subclass client order, the next thing you would do is go to the Volcanic Caves and search around until you see a Fondren, which is like a bigger version of this uh, four-legged creature. Okay. So let's switch back to my higher level Ranger. It's still not max level. That's the point of today's video. Oh, I... Out of habit, go to ship one. But you know what, since I'm already here, let me show you what this ranger is aspiring to be. So I play on two different ships, that's two different servers, and it is not necessary to do. It's just something extra I do as a content creator because it lets me collaborate with more people. So yeah, this is what my finished ranger looks like. I'll show you the character info right here. Class info, 90, 90. Ranger main, hunter sub. I got that hunter sub to 90 by maining it at some point. Like and so this is what my skill trees look like. Keep in mind, these are not finalized. Do not follow these as a guide. This is custom. And I have two of them, so I bought an additional skill tree to work as a subclass because I use Ranger as a subclass with Tekker as a main because it's fun, not because it's effective. So I'll show you what I got rocking here things you should maybe pick up along the way. So Blight Rounds is the reason a lot of Rangers uh, are necessary in team fights. It adds a Armor Sunder effect, a red circle that you shoot and do more damage. 
It's excellent. But then there are a lot of passive traits for increasing your damage. This one's while stationary. This one's while mobile. If you load a Blight Round, you get more range power. And your Photon Arts, your special attacks, consume less of the Photon Point Meter. Feel See in the bottom left corner, PP. So I'm going to hit a little bit of everything so we understand holistically my approach to this leveling. And I think the skill tree matters a little bit because you can you can level it up in a certain order to get the most bang for your buck. So because very hard advanced quests are a lot of just shooting mobs constantly with a launcher, stationary fire makes a lot of sense. Because it's just a, a damage bonus. Advanced precision hit also makes sense. Uh, keep in mind, this isn't a ranger-specific guide. I'm just showing you my approach on ranger. Then I'm taking my traps, because traps restore PP. One in tool mastery, one in tactical trap, because it helps even more. I keep roll shots, so that if I load a special bullet in a roll, I can use a normal attack without wasting the special bullet. I think I've covered what's important here. Take your passive damage bonuses, take your advanced precision hit. You can put one to five points here depending on how much you use your mag. Your mag can build up a powerful photon blast over time, which helps with mobbing. And then for the hunter subclass, I took all the passive damage bonuses. And then I chunked the rest of the points into passive defensive bonuses. This one's an active ability that makes you immune to knockback. And then this is an ability that automatically uses a healing item. And this is a very cheeky ability that if you would otherwise get one hit, you survive with one HP. I'm definitely going to restructure this tree around. But for now, I'm just sticking with it because I don't want to use a skill reset pass until we get a higher level in the future. Japan is currently at level 95, and they have plans to be at 100. We are currently at cap 90. Feel free to stop by anytime. All right, now for gear, ultimately on the Ranger, I'm going to end up with an Atlas rifle and maybe an Atlas launcher. At the moment, those are technically best in slot, but there are other things that vie for that position that we're getting shortly. And if you don't have those, if you have second or third best, they aren't too far apart to where you have to feel like you need this stuff. You really don't. So off to ship two where I show you my leveling equipment. I have the same equipment on ship one because I level every character with a ranger sub because I'm familiar with ranger. Okay, so this is a final impact launcher, and I made a guide on how to obtain this specific launcher doing an extreme quest. Which quest are you, up for? you typically need to be a higher level to farm this quest, and it's a little outdated in terms of a moneymaker method. But this is the one, Heaven and Earth. You can maybe buy one of these off the player market. The reason that I use this launcher instead of the other one, which I will show you very shortly. Is because that on a shooting drive, you cannot get this augment called Increase Experience 3. Earned EXP increases 10%. And then it also has a potential midair damage increases 24, uh, 21%. Shooting Drive has a potential, increases Cosmos Breaker, which is a photon art. It's like this blue orb that explodes on the ground. It's really good. So if you can't afford or don't want a final impact, Shooting Drive is your next best all-class launcher, meaning any class can equip this, but only a Ranger subclass or a Ranger main class can use photon arts with the launcher. This is why anytime I level a class, I do it with a sub ranger so that I have access to a powerful launcher to make the leveling process easier. I find that it saves me time over the entire leveling process, but if you just dislike ranger, you don't have to feel forced to do it. You can find a way to equalize that. 
So let's search real quick. How expensive is a shooting drive and how expensive is a final impact? All right, one mil here. And then this is plus 30. This one's plus 35. The reason the plus 35 is this expensive is because this one has an enhancement level maximum of 30. And to raise that, you're gonna take this launcher over to the item lab and you're going to increase that cap by sacrificing five other identical final impacts. They don't have to have the same augments, they just all have to be final impacts. So we enhance our item, we would chunk five other final impacts to get it to plus 35. And that is super helpful if you plan to do a lot, a lot, a lot of leveling. I'm keeping it at plus 30 for now because this is my alternate character. But if this was my main character, I would get it to plus 35, no questions. Because that plus 35 launcher, I'm going to use on every character I make on ship one. Let's pay attention to how much I have here. Also, Snow White in chat said a big tip. Inferno Bazooka has a perk called Alternate History, which is the same as EXP3. So you get a total 20% boost. So look at how many different characters I have. I leveled all of those with a ranger sub with a launcher. So let me mute this bot real quick. Perfect. All right, let's grab my final impact out of storage. This one's plus 35. Increased experience three, fantastic. And now let's search that uh, final, imp or that, uh, what's it called, Inferno Bazooka. Oh, so this one's even better. It's a 10 star, so it's a little bit weaker. But for getting you through those first couple levels, and especially the very hard advanced quest, this makes a lot of sense to me. In fact, let's search for the proper alternate history. We're gonna search increased experience three. And search by price. Let's see what comes up. 715K. And so you'd buy five of these to get us to plus 35. I don't think that's necessary because you're not gonna be using this launcher for very long. So maybe get it to plus 10 and use it in Vax for a little bit. Very hard advance quest for a little bit until you're at the proper level to move to Buster Quest. Then, at that point, make the upgrade to the Shooting Drive or the Final Impact. So this is Ship 1 prices now. And again, I'm just doing this example with Ranger. There are other weapons for other classes that have similar strength for similar rarity and power. You'll see that this is a... Let's count the stars. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. This is an 11 star weapon. And the shooting drive is a 13. So you would think the shooting drive would just be universally better, but it turns out with a certain amount of range power on your character that the final impact might edge it out despite being a lesser rarity weapon. And so I'm getting a lot of that range power from my units that can tip the scale to make the final impact hit a little harder. Uh, units are going to be important here, but don't pay attention to what I have on. These are old, there is new, and better stuff. And I have that on my other character. Okay, so speaking of units, these are the current, you know, bang for your buck units. This is called a Klesis, and this is going to tie into why we're using Buster Quest as our level up method of choice. So yeah, I started this tangent by saying I'm keeping my final impact at plus 30 because I'm only leveling one character. Had I planned on leveling five of them, I think it's absolutely worth making that investment to get it to plus 35. The same for the rifle. 
it's a significant damage increase because it increases the element level. Okay, so I talked about the launcher. Let's talk about the rifle. This is the Yasminkov 7000V. Has a potential that increases damage by 13% and reduces PP consumption when special rounds are equipped. So as long as I load that single blight round into my rifle, I can start spamming abilities and using less meter, which means more ability spam, obviously. So this is why I choose this rifle for my all class rifle. All class. If you wanted to buy these with uh, in-game materials, you would go to exchange badge, exchange unique weapon badge, and you would scroll down until you find Yasminkov. Or shooting drive. You can get unique weapon badges, I believe, from killing Rappies or certain unique enemies, and they will drop this badge. So you can't necessarily farm for these, but you will pick these up over time by just playing the game. But if you don't collect those, you can just buy them off the player shop. So this one is 630k. And so if you wanted it plus 35, you'd buy five of them to compress into one. But you don't need that. You can get this and it'll be just fine. To get it to plus 30, you would take any weapon to the item lab. You would hit enhance item, select your weapon, and you would uh, sacrifice other weapons. And the most popular weapon to level up other weapons with is 12 star weapons and sometimes Revolcio weapons. I will show you what those are. So we're going to do this search right here. We're going to search weapons, enhancement level plus 30, and rarity setting 12. At that point, the cheapest one is a Revolcio weapon, which is a 13 star weapon that you get for free for uh, completing a collection folder. I got booted from server, so not a big deal. I have been logged in all day, so it doesn't surprise me. And since I'm at the gate area anyway, let me show you where you can get those Hello. collection files. We're going to talk to Equipment Officer Prin, and she has something called the next 13 star collection. And so you have to do a certain amount of tasks to get these revolcios for free. This one is urgent quest, kill enemies, and do expeditions. And then you get a revolcio for free, which you can use to upgrade things like that Yasmin Cobb by again taking them to the item lab and sacrificing them into the main weapon. If you need help with that, I would look up an enhancement guide. However, the really short explanation is you sacrifice a weapon to get it to plus 10. Then you level the potential by selecting it again. Then you get it to plus 20. You level the potential again. Then you get it to plus 30. Level the potential again. And if you wanted it to plus 35, you need to put five of the same weapon into itself. So that at least explains the weapons. Now let's go for the units. These are Klesis units. These are the best bang for your buck. And we're going to get them through the Buster Metal Exchange. So we're going to go to Limited Item Exchange. And we're going to take these Evlita units that we get for 50 Buster Medals. Now you're starting to see why we might need to do Buster Quest. Buster Quest is a tower defense mission. And for completing one, you get Buster Medals. You're going to get Evlita units. And eventually, you're going to upgrade Evlita into Klesis. You can get the Klesis booster by exchanging Rising Weapon Badge 4 or by just doing more Buster Quests. We're going to go to Get Unit. You can select back, and you'll see that he has Klesis as an option. 100 Klesis boosters, and Evlita back. And it turns out that the augments or perks on that armor is already pretty good. Uh, there's a tip in chat for weapon enhancement right now, which is looking for weapons with the augment MP Embrace, because if you sacrifice those weapons into your main weapon via the item lab, they're worth more. So weapon enhancement experience plus 90. So this is a good cost effective way to upgrade a weapon. So keep that in mind. Especially now 
when there's a quest going around that gives those like candy. I guess that's kind of a pun because it's a trick or treat one, but that's okay. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. So limited item, you'll see that these are pretty decent augments to start with. So you don't even have to change these at all. You can use these stock for a while and they will be just fine. All right. So we have our units now. If we want some starter pack units, there are very cheap units on the shop. I recommend Saiha. I'm gonna spell that out for you. Look how cheap these are gonna be. Oh, wow. If chat has a better recommendation, I'm all open to that. So Saiha back and Saiha legs uh, mixed together to give... I'll just buy one right now so you can see. They have what's called a set effect that gives you melee, tech, and dex. Not really applicable to a ranger, but these are still good base. They're already good without the set effect. Uh, chat saying Brissa is good. I can confirm Brissa is also good. I just don't know how expensive it is. Oh, hell yeah. Go Brissa. Absolutely go Brissa. Saiha, Brissa, you're not going to be on these units for very long, so just pick some. In fact, if you want to spend 100k or more on them, it's not even a bad idea if you really want to. You can increase the augment search so you can have more perks on that Brissa to begin with. Or maybe not. Oh, I was on weapon, not, not unit. I feel dumb. Okay, so that's 420. Yeah, don't do that. Just search it at zero. Yeah, that ramps up. So this is why I thought Brissa was expensive. So TLDR, don't put too much thought into these initial units. Go Brissa, go Saiha, doesn't matter. Have something on that's not the base units. That's not the free units you get. Because you'll use those in Vax and you'll use those in Busters for a little bit until you can get your Avlita. So now that I have said all that, let's get started on some Buster quests. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the Alliance Quarters. If you're not part of an Alliance, you can join by searching on the Visiphone. So this is a Visiphone and you would search through Arc Search, Alliance Search, and search a name of an Alliance. In this case, if you're on ship one, we have a community clan called tier 1.1. And when tier 1.1 fills, we're gonna have tier 1.2. And when that fills, we're gonna have tier 1.3. Right now we're still on 1.1. So if you want an alliance and you're really motivated about this game and like it, a casual hours, of course, feel free, search. You'll probably get a no, no issue, no application needed. So yeah, you can join alliances through searching that kind of stuff. There's also sometimes people recruiting in the gate areas. You'll see if you want to change character overhead display, you can put alliance and character name and start asking around. As you play with people, if you play with the same group of people often, chances are they'll invite you to the, to the alliance or you can create your own one. The advantage of being in an alliance is the team tree. And so I'm going to receive a photonic effect, that's just a bonus, to increase my experience gained. So now that I have that, I can begin doing Buster Quest at maximum efficiency. And so now we're going to go to Franco's Cafe, because that's my favorite base of operations. It's just so peaceful there. Good morning. I was low-key expecting there to be like a riot or something here, but... Uh, the next thing to mention is your daily orders. If you do daily client orders, which I need to pick up three of them, you get what's called a daily boost. So for the past five days, I've done all three of the available orders, and now I have a daily boost of plus 50%. So now that would stack with the tree buff. So I have two buffs, the daily boost and the photonic effect from the tree. The third boost is going to come from boosters. Increased experience, rare drop rate 250, and tri-boost plus 50 or 100. 
You can buy experience ones right here at the visit phone. 13, 14K a piece, not bad whatsoever. You can get the rare drop to 50% by trading an item called EX cubes to that red area at the top of the shopping plaza where I was, you can go to the EX cube exchange and exchange EX cube for rare drop booster plus 250. Those are very useful because they're cheap. They typically pay for themselves. Now, how you get an EX cube is you take a 10 star weapon. Let's hope that I have one. Let's just chunk these real quick. These are unidentified weapons. One of them's probably gonna be a 10 star. I wanna make sure you know everything before we move on. All right, so we're gonna get rid of some of those question mark weapons by going to the item techer. We're holding shift down or right trigger on the controller and just holding downward. You could even do it like this. You can hold and then tap up and it'll select all of them. Very, very useful tip. We're gonna always do light and increased experience one unless it's a very rare weapon. Then we'll do lucky charm. All right, so I got some 10 star weapons. So now that I have 10 star weapons, like these, I'm going to hover over to the shopping cart, go to swap shop, EX cube, and select each of these. I am not deleting this one because it is an eight slot. Let's pay attention real quick to how much the difference is between an eight and a three on the player market. Item market, one slot. All right, let's search, check augment market prices. We're gonna uncheck this and we're gonna search all weapons with eight slots. 16K. And now we're gonna search all with three slots. 1K. So whenever I see an eight slot weapon, I typically keep it because it's very useful for a future thing you'll have to learn called affixing augments, which basically converts perks and stuff from one weapon and you transfer it onto the other for a cost. And it's a risky cost sometimes because there's a, per a percent chance you fail and maybe lose the original piece. Uh, don't be scared of that system. It is super intuitive. Once you learn it, you'll be making a lot of profit because you understand what to look for out in the wild, what to keep. Okay, so let's swap shop that final one. And now we have our EX cubes from swapping those and we can convert those by going to the top of the shopping plaza red area to rare drop rate 250s. Like I said, uh, tri boost 50s you're gonna get for just doing daily things and playing the game. Tri boost 100s are typically given for campaigns. So again, I played PVP for a little bit and now I have a reward of three 100% tri boost. Yeah, there's PvP in this game. So let's select Buster Quest. Sub Quest, Buster Quest. It's Castrum Demonica Battle. So you'll see that this says Grade 3, Grade 3 Plus, or Grade 1 or 2. As you complete your Castrum Demonica Battles, your Buster Quest, you will level up from Grade 1 to 3 and then to three plus. So one, two, three, three plus. And they get successively, har successively harder. You get a bonus for doing free matches, a bonus to your experience earned. And I'll show you how to check that. We're gonna go to current events. So globe, current events. Sorry, globe. Oh, here we go, sorry. Personal data, content information, bus request information. Number of boost, main match boost. What this means is if I do a free match, it gives me increased experience on my next main match. This is very helpful for experience gain. So I'm going to do two free matches in a row while explaining how I approach Buster Quest. And then after those two free matches, I'm doing four main matches. And that is the meta for leveling. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the highest level drink I can. If you're not premium, just do that. 
Shifter is good because more attack means things die quicker. And that's one thing that I want to stress on the gear that I chose to level up with. Increased EXP is good, but killing enemies faster is more XP overall. So these people started this quest really early. So I wasn't able to drop a party beacon, but if you use your end menu, you can place or remove a party beacon before a quest starts. And if people join you, you get a inherent try boost. So the more people in your party, the more boost. So four people in my party, I think it's a 40% boost. All right, so Buster Quest. Yes, that is a animated castle. Sometimes on a Buster Quest, you will be in charge of uh, selecting your tower's defenses. And the best one, I think, is go for balanced. You're going to get an option of balance, special attack, defense. Uh, your knee-jerk reaction on most games is going to be like, oh, I want more attack. But the problem is, it's so easy to get good gear on your character that attack isn't worth it because using turrets like this is almost worse than just shooting things. And so what balance, defensive, and special give you is telepipe cannons. You can basically set a teleportation node across the map, which helps with moving around. Another uh, part of balanced is these walls right here. If you're getting overwhelmed by things, you can place a wall, a force barrier. And the third thing to mention is if your tower gets poisoned, corrupted, you can activate a freeze barrier to get rid of it immediately. Otherwise, you have to wait for a spawn animation to shoot it off the wall. So right now, I'm using my launcher. Remember, I'm jumping in the air before every shot because that's the potential. I should mention what PAs I'm using and where to get them. This photon art... Oh, look, here, a tower is corrupted. So we have to wait until that animation finishes, and then it'll spawn something on the side that I can shoot. If this person chose balanced, I could just walk over to the terminal, select freeze barrier, and then go about my business and not worry about the tower. And yes, chat, this is a wave defense mode. So let's talk about what photon arts I selected on my weapons. This one is Divine Launcher, and it is a crafted version. You can buy crafted versions in the player shop or request them from other people who craft via the visit phone. I'll show you what that looks like after two of these matches. So Divine Launcher crafted is amazing because it has a giant blast radius. I'm going to sit in between both of these since I'm a ranger and can reach. So Divine Launcher is going to take out all those, of course, after someone else ganks it, but that's okay. I'd rather have help than have a perfect video example. So on the free match, you don't have to overthink it. This is very easy. The way that this activity works is you defend towers for a phase, then you push the offensive with these buster rams. The buster ram breaks the castle wall, and then we enter a true attack phase on the castle, and then rinse, repeat, and do a final attack phase. Uh, typically, like let's say I spawned on orange, well then I am relegating myself to the left side of the map. If I spawn on purple, left side of the map. If I spawn on green or blue, I default to the right side of the map. This makes it really easy to tell who is defending what in in, in a public uh, match, in a match made activity. So I'm going to activate a skill called Hunter Physique so I don't get knocked back. Throw a light round on there to weaken it to make it easier for everyone to kill. But we're overpowered so we instantly killed it. Now I'm going to back up, start something called Satellite Cannon to kill this sword before it even drops. And here we go, satellite cannon goes in, sword dead, now I'm back to mobbing. These rings are useful for getting around the map, so you don't have to waste any of the photon points, your meter, to travel around. This skill is called a rocket rodeo, and it hits things, and you'll see the back 
start to light up with more fuel, and that means you now have a more powerful attack that has a bigger radius. This one is Cosmos Breaker, that blue orb, and once it touches the ground, it explodes. I like it because it's a delayed hit where I can kind of go do some investigation on my own, while Cosmos Breaker does the majority of the work. I'm going to throw some traps to refill meter, throw a Cosmos at that area, and go investigate. And so while Cosmos is doing the work for me, I'm exploring and grabbing things. This is why I think Ranger dominates the Buster quest. And it gets even worse when you start using the rifle. This is a ability called homing emission. It is unique because it almost has no range where it cannot be used. I can shoot them across the map. Let's use a different PA. This one's called steady shot. There's not a ghost of a chance a single bullet lands because the bullets disappear before they get there. Homing emission on the other hand. Oh, homing emission will find them. It's like the Duolingo owl. It'll show up at their doorstep. So there are different castle variants. We got one that likes to chunk bombs and has a sword. Sometimes there's a castle with like uh, giant turrets and there's another castle that can throw walls. Since I spawned on the left side initially, I am going to the left side during the attack phase. Alright, so I'm gonna pop Hunter Physique. Normally, I queue up a satellite cannon right here, and so as he drops a hand, I can just immediately take it out. Sometimes I'll even pre place it, but my team is amazing and we destroyed that. So after this, you crawl up the arm that you destroyed second, and then kill the core of the castle. But because this is free match, we obliterate it. A Duolingo mag? Yeah, that would be funny, chat. And so since I did a free match, the rewards are just Buster Medals, which is what we want. And also, any comments in the YouTube section would be very appreciated along the way. Uh, since I am the party... No, I'm not the party leader, never mind. It's up to the party leader to requeue. So sometimes you want to let your other people grab their loot before you requeue anything. So we're waiting on him. Uh, but I can continue explaining what I was saying with the uh, photon arts, because I can even use them here. Uh, this one is called Slide Burst, and this is the crafted version. It lets you strafe on a cloud. It's one of my favorite PAs. Uh, this one, now that I'm on the second ballot, this is Positron Blast. You charge it up, fire a very powerful piercing shot. Wait, did he just select three plus? I'm out. Oh, we're out. It's... Don't trust the party leader sometimes. That's okay. All right, so back to Buster Quest. We're doing another free match back to back. You can do one, then two, or you can do two, then four. I'm selecting two and four because I like the extended break. Okay, so let's take our drink. And I'll still go over Photon Arts while I'm in the lobby. Did they just start that with two people? Oh, come on. Now I abandon. This is some bad luck. If I told you guys this has never happened to me in, you know, two characters to level 90 plus, you'd think I'm joking, but I'm entirely serious. But I'm glad this is happening on YouTube because you're seeing my approach to it. I want to get a free match with eight people, myself included. And you know what? Let me show you this real quick, just so you can see. I organized a Discord specifically for doing Ship 2 Busters and Urgent Quest. And I invited people and I met people around the ship. And we ran Buster Quest all day together because it was a good way to make more Ship 2 friends. And you can make friends doing these Buster Quests and just queuing in publicly. Once you get a team that knows what they're doing and you feel confident with, stay with them. Okay, so let's keep going over Ranger PAs. 
So we just went over Positron Blast, you charge it up, big piercing shot, then this is the small piercing shot, but it fires a lot faster. Uh, this piercing shot is limited to double piercing. This one can go five times piercing once you have it maximum charge. So there's a time and place where each of them is better DPS. This one is called Impact Slider and you slide towards the enemy. You also have invincibility frames while sliding, so it's a very useful tool for getting around safely. This slide burst has startup and ending invincibility frames. So startup invincible, ending invincible. Uh, this sneak shooter has a invincibility frame right when you hit the floor, but not before. Steady shot is the classic machine gun. This is useful for hitting very fast moving targets with hit scan. This is satellite cannon, which you already saw me use once which is great for pre-spawning an area, so if you know something's coming, to charge this up, let it rip. And so those are some of the photon arts I use. Uh, some of these are very, very expensive on the player shop, and a better way to get them cheaper is to go out and get them yourself. Uh, in fact, I'm sure the information's out there, but I had to write down where to get each of these by going to each um, advanced quests. So super hard advanced quests can drop these level 17 discs that you use to learn a lot of these skills. You can see that I don't even have these level 17 because they're unfairly priced and I haven't had the time to go through super hard advanced quests and obtain them myself. So for example, if you want satellite cannon, you would go to the underground shafts. If you want positron blast, you go to the nightfall province, I think. Uh, for some popular movement techniques like Ilzonde, you go to the desert. For the Cosmos Breaker launcher, you go to the city. What else? For Impact Slider, Volcanic Caves, City, Steady Shot. And I think those were the ones that I noted that were hard to get. Uh, this information is on the internet, probably a search away. But since I had to do shacks to level in previous episodes, I just noted it down as I went through so I could refer to it later. Okay, so you've saved money on these. You now have your bread and butter photon arts. You don't have to set these up the same way I have them set up. My control scheme's a little bit wonky. Let me tell you about this Sigma Guiler. This is a 12 star wired lance that is class neutral. And it has a technique, a spell, baked into it. Every Sigma Guiler comes with this. So this is an attack buff spell. Since I'm a Hunter main with a Ranger sub, or a Ranger main with a Hunter sub, neither of these can use techniques, unless it's baked into the weapon. So over time, get used to having a Sigma Guiler on you if you're not a technique-based class, because having a free attack buff is always nice. So you can see now we have four here. Snow White's also going to carry the hell out of us. Very solid ranger. So this is good. Now I can focus on mostly commentary and get carried. I did not mention rings. Part of having these 12 star units is the fact that you can slot rings into them. You get rings by going to the cafe, talking to the ring seller, and using... Um, what do they call it? Gathered materials to trade for these rings. You can also just buy them on the player shop, but they're grossly overpriced because of the process that it takes to get them. If you want these rings yourself, you have to harvest or gather. And you can do that by going to a normal expedition, difficulty doesn't matter, and fishing until you have a fever, which is just a combo system. So just fish 15 times in a row, or until you see the words fever, once you have a fever, you go mine, and you repeat this until you have enough materials. You can check on content information, gathering information, gathering stats, at how much stamina you have left for harvesting and fishing. So don't overcomplicate the system. It's as simple as it sounds. Go to an expedition, fish until combo, harvest the rest of the way until you're out of stamina, rinse, repeat, right when you log on, right when you log off. That's the best way to do it. 
All right, so now I'm on a free match. Again, second free match. The mini map is super helpful here. It shows all things that happen. So a bomb just dropped at blue. That's my responsibility with crafted homing emission since I can shoot it across the map. And if I wanted to spam homing emission, I would use uh, a light round. I'd load around into it. And now it costs very little. So I can spam this. A uh, free match is very easy, and if you're over leveled, it scales you. Uh, keep in mind, if you're low level, though, it scales you up. So you collect these crystals around the map to get mana. And as you collect mana, the health bar on these increase, the health pool increases, so they effectively have more health. They don't regain health, they just have more total health. So it's similar effective, but if your tower is really weak, it's still going to be really weak. I've only lost the tower once, and that was today, pubbing these out. So now we're waiting for the buster rams to spawn. While that happens, you can set your telepipe cannons. If I recall, I spawned on the right side, so I should preference the right. I might be wrong on that, but it really doesn't matter because I'm ultimately just going to look at where people go, and then I'm going the other place where there's less people. If you found this video helpful so far, let me know. Stop by twitch.tv slash camicakes and say hi. I'll probably be doing something similar to this or playing some Destiny 2. I log in for an urgent quest all the time. So there's a reason that I have a character on ship 1 and ship 2 and it goes beyond just collaboration. An urgent quest is scheduled throughout the day and is sometimes random. These are basically Quest, raid encounters, boss fights, on demand. So even this buster quest that we're doing could be an urgent quest. And urgent quests give great experience and great rewards. And sometimes you're able to do it on multiple characters. Sometimes you're able to do it once per ship. And that's the key phrase here, per ship. So since I have almost two max characters, one on each ship, if it's something I can only complete once per ship, if I'm fast enough, I can get two completions. And that's huge. That's huge for a content creator. Because I'm getting twice the chances at really spicy drops. And keep in mind that cosmetic items you buy can apply to your entire account. So I'll show you what that means. Like you see the outfit my character's wearing? I didn't buy this on ship two. I bought that on ship one. If you buy duplicates of a cosmetic item, it applies to your entire account, not just to the character. So the advantage of me having a character on each ship is that I can A, buy the cosmetic item on the server that it's cheaper, and B, have double the chance of getting a drop in that 30 minute window. Uh, this is totally extra though, and no casual player should ever worry about that. I'm just telling you why I'm going through this process all over again. And it's good, because you guys get to learn something. Oh, here we go. Activate the wall. First time I had to do it. Uh, there's also artillery cannons, which I should show you. You can charge them up and use them to ignite things. Let's see, let's see, let's get it. Yeah. I blew up the, uh... Alright, let's move it again. Let's scroll down, get a look at the battlefield. Yeah, don't, don't worry about using these too much. I mentioned it really early in this Buster Quest, but the attack style 
a defensive setup is not the way to go unless you have trash weapons and even the most uh the cheapest weapons in the market are better than trash because when this originally released in japan the best quote-unquote weapons were a lot worse than what we have now oh i'm going left oh oh <laughs> we buy standard I think that's correct. So homing a mission lets out a little beef when you got a lock on, and it's super useful for knowing when you're even allowed to attack an enemy to begin with, when they're vulnerable I should say. Once again, I know Ranger like the back of my hand. You'll learn the class that you chose, like the back of your hand. I'm just giving Ranger specific tips while I have downtime. Alright, so now that I have hit the free field, or sorry, the uh, free match bonus times two, I'm gonna go to the lobby for just a sec and queue a main match. So let's go to uh, content information, bust request information, main match boost, four times left. We got two times for each of the two free matches. So now I walk to the counter, sub quest, buster quest, main match. We're doing four of these in a row. And yes, you can eventually switch to grade three plus, but I do not recommend that when you're leveling a subclass as a main class because your gear is class neutral. And if your gear is class neutral, it's typically weaker. So this Yasminkov rifle is a lot worse than my best in slot atlas rifle and this one is naughty so you'll see the power difference from a level 87 hunter main ranger sub my level 80 ranger main hunter sub is like five times more powerful than this it's nuts so this is why i don't go to three plus three plus might be too intense with uh randoms you can try it but it's not gonna be 100% successful all the time. Of course, the reward would be more Buster Medals and uh, more drops that are useful. You can get rare drops for this, I should say. Okay, so let's pop our boosters. Increased experience, rare drop 250. Try boost, 100. We're doing the 100. And so, I, at some point my boosters expired, but that's okay, I'm just doing this for sake of a video. So these are gonna increase my experience earned. And since I'm now on the grade three, I get more experience here. So this is where the boosters count the most. Three plus is the norm for once you're maxed out at 90-90. So if you max out your character and still don't have your Iblita and eventually Klesis units, then yeah, go back to 3 plus and get the remaining materials. And so chat brought up a good question. Do you think I ever get bored of doing the same thing over and over again? The answer is no, because I don't do the exact same thing over again. Yes, this activity is the same, but my approach is always different. I'm always learning something new. Uh, speaking of which, balanced, attack, defense, special. I go balanced. Nice to see some uh, happy friends in this uh, party chat here. Uh, but let me explain. So I'm trying to play high intensity, right? Trying to practice, learn what my PAs do. Even though it's the same activity, different approach. I practice, I learn. Uh, sometimes I'll approach this activity with a different class just to level it up and learn about the class while I do it. Sometimes I will pick a new photon art I haven't used and try it here since it's really hard to fail these. The grade threes, yeah, you can fail a little bit easier. I'm experienced, of course. But the free matches, you can get away with just trying random stuff. So whenever I have to farm monotonous stuff, I usually use the class of Force Main and Fighter Sub. 
because that gives me a lot of interesting uh, combos to learn. It's kind of like a freeform combo system. It's really cool. Alright, that's it. It hit our freeze barrier. And go about our business. Alright, all these are here. I think I can get away without using the barrier since I'm more set up. Let's get some weak bullets ready to go. Let's uh, auto lock onto the head. Hitbox is being a little finicky for me. So that, that's part of what I mean by like staying engaged and trying something new and practicing. You can practice your aim on these kind of things as well. The free aiming is not like another game. You're not going to get aim assist. Alright, Buster Rams getting ready to drop. Since I have a telepipe cannon, I'm going to place mine up and a little bit to the left. Why over there? Because there's two other telepipe cannons. If orange selected a telepipe cannon, I would send orange all the way over to blue so that the two opposite ends can help each other by teleporting around. Homing a mission at a distance, then I can stay near my Buster Ram. I have flashbang grenades too, just in case. I hear a lot of um, lances flying through the air, so I always like look at the minimap to find out where those are. Uh, someone's frozen, I think. Yeah, let's go help this side. They're gonna need it. Oh, those salamanders need to go. That is the first thing. So salamander, we throw a flashbang at them. Now they're blind. We get the things off the ship directly, or off the buster ram directly. Salamanders can nuke a ship, or a buster ram, like 100 to zero, no problem. I activate hunter physique so I don't get knocked back, load the bullets, get on one of these dash panels, and head forward. Gonna auto lock while I run, roll to cancel the kick, apply weak bullet, get overhead, piercing shot to set up the combo, shoot downward, and now it's gonna rear itself back. I can take a shot, move forward with this, Start charging again. Uh, this was Sliders. And as long as I keep up DPS like this, we're going to succeed. I'm going to hold this down. Hunter Physique will let me live. Automate will heal me. And now we got that. As soon as we touch down, if I feel that my team is weak, I throw a Star Atomizer healing item and then start my Satellite Cannon. If I walk backwards a little bit, my Satellite Cannon will hit 100%. Otherwise, I might be too far forward and miss completely. So during the cutscene of him throwing the sword, you can start traveling backwards, even in the cutscene, to be in a better, more optimal position to satellite cannon. All right, Orange is going to need help. I'm about to run out of meters, so we're going to refill with traps in a moment here. So Cosmos Breaker about to come in clutch if more enemies spawn here. Uh, looks like there's too many people here, so I'm going to ditch and go somewhere else. All right, nice. Let's get this one done. Pay attention to the minimap whenever you're doing something mundane. You can see orange is poisoned, corrupted. No one really did that yet, but he was dealing with the golem. I don't blame him. Next golem, I'm not gonna use my weak bullets yet. I think we can kill this without him because I'm gonna go launch her in a moment here, judging from the minimap. This is why the telepipe cannon is sick because if we had telepipe from orange to blue, I could go to orange automatically and help out blue. So I'm paying attention to everything around me. I'm gonna let that detonate in the air to take out all the lances. 
Uh, check the mini-map again. There should be bombs on each of the towers. And since I'm far away, we can homing a mission that last one. And then after we shoot what we think is enough damage, we can leave and go look at something else. Uh, blue does have the freeze barrier, but we did enough damage to get rid of that corruption. I'm going to apply weak bullets now, because I will need these very soon. Oh, almost psych. Orange is about to get swarmed. I'm going to impact slider to put damage in while moving, because I need to get to orange ASAP. So I just lost my stack of weak bullets. Now we have 70 seconds to wait until I get it back. But at least the tower is safe. Here I thought the enemy wave was over and we we're getting ready to attack, so I wanted to have this preloaded. Luckily, it's not a big mistake because I'll still have them in time for the boss damage. Alright, if those are down, that means bombs are in others. And there's the attack phase. Huge. So, you can also set a telepipe to walk all the way up this area ahead of time. Or to preset it ahead of time. Both sides have to clear their ads for you to be able to progress forward. I'm going to start using Rocket Rodeo. It's going to hit that flare in the back to signify more damage is about to come out. Cosmos Breaker, Leaping Dodge to get away. Leaping Dodge is a ring, one of my favorite rings, because you can leap into safety. That was a PA called Close and Personal, which is kind of like using your launcher like a shotgun. So 80k damage, 90k damage to the head. We take him out very quick. I'm about to get my weak bullets back. Just in time, I activate Hunter Physique because once I load these weak bullets, Satellite Cannon is going in. Gonna use Sneak Shooter to give myself a red circle around me. You see that JA circle? By hitting that circle correctly, it gives me a damage bonus. And since I started that damage bonus on Sneak Shooter, it gives me some passive Hunter damage that increases my Satellite Cannon hit. So if I'm lucky, this dude will show his hand here in a sec. A little bit off there. I should have let auto-targeting do its thing instead of Z-aiming. Sometimes you want to Z-aim, sometimes you want to auto-lock. Alright, so now let's get to work. Let's apply weak bullets where I can. Let's dodge to live. Let's get that teammate up so he can help us. He's up. We're good. Apply weak bullet. Let team go in. Huge. Apply weak bullet. Let team go in. And now the finisher should be very, very easy. Getting to this point is harder than finishing him. I could have saved a weak bullet, but we don't need it. Our teammate is also in something called a Dark Blast, which you unlock this episode. They are super helpful. I just currently don't use them because I don't really know how to use them effectively. And I'll learn another day. I don't need them. So the reason that all of these items at the end are, quest are uh, question mark items is because I am holding something called the Rowlet, which makes it so that mystery item drop rate increases. And by talking to Zig, that guy next to the item lab, you can complete a client order that lets the potential, the perk of the Rowlet work even though you don't have it currently out and equipped. Same with the uh, Nuevo. Uh, or staff. This used to be called the Monkey King bar. So if you're curious as to why it's this, that just means staff. So that says drop rate of items with augments increases. And so I'm not going to take everything because I truly don't have the storage space for it. And I know what that item pool is and I don't need the resources at the moment. So now I think we have enough time to do one more grade three, and then we can go immediately into the urgent quest, which coincidentally is the same activity. So now party leader says they're searching on multiple blocks. So we're going to menu, hit tab and select yes. This will allow us to search. I'm gonna feed my mag, so my mag does some extra stuff for me. 
Uh, right now we're getting an urgent quest notification though. Like I said, it's basically for the same activity we're already doing. And since I know I'm going to need more boosters for that urgent quest, I'm just going to grab them right now. I think that should be good. Because I want to keep my uh, try boost up for as long as possible. Fantasy Star Online, ladies and gentlemen. Fashion was a mistake. There you go. So this will be our next grade three. Hopefully I can provide some more on the fly tips here. What does that gunblade do? Perfect, you were asking. You talk to Zig to do a client order. The client order will ask you to get these weapons to plus 30. And after that, they work even though you're they're in your backpack. So it makes every item you encounter a question mark item. Whereas previously they might be just a, a 10 star uh, launcher or something like that, that you turn into an EX cube. Yeah, I should lock the Browlet. The reason I probably haven't is because I probably locked it on ship one and just assumed it was already locked. So I think this is a really dynamic way to level. Because there can be a different castle type, different enemy density and whatnot, and different modifiers boost to the enemies. So it'll keep you on your toes. Not every Buster Quest is going to feel exactly the same, and that's good. So I also have a launcher round to load. Doesn't mean I'll use it, but it helps with PP costs, since I know I'm going to be using a lot of photon arts. Wow, we're immediately going to ditch that to go for... Weak bullets, because this is a boss called Omega Hunol. Omega Hunol is always a boss in the Urgent Quest version, but he's a rare spawn in the normal one that we're doing right now. So I spam a little bit of impact slider so I can reposition myself as I'm putting damage in. And we nuked him. Keep in mind he pulls out a sword after you do enough damage to him and then you can target the sword. So it's always worth breaking the sword. I heard it increases your drop rates or like enables a bigger loot pool or something like that, but I can't verify that for sure. That's up to chat and maybe up to a quick internet search. I just break it anyway because it helps kill him. Of course I'll play Beyond Light. What kind of question is that? How am I supposed to know if it's bad or good? Let's check our telepipe cannons. This is now the time to set them. So orange to blue. And this gives us a, uh, a fail save for when one of the opposite sides gets overwhelmed. Oh no, left side is dead. Can I trust right side to fill in for me? I think I can. As a ranger, I will always, always, always 
choose to be ranged. I don't need to be close to an enemy to do damage, so why even risk it when I can like shoot while backing up and going to some place? I can do damage while moving, so I can be where I need to to revive somebody or to put in a kill shot on the most important enemy. attack phase. Slowed my bullets. Hunter physique on. Target. There it goes. Roll to cancel. This goes in. We want to be as close as possible. Piercing round. Positron blast. Aim downward. Get it close again. Start charging the next. Piercing. Positron blast. Aim down. And we got it. I'm going to walk backwards during the cutscene again. You can see my character moving. Start the satellite cannon now. And was in the perfect place for it. Oh, now these walls spawn up. This is great. Satellite cannon, choose through these. However, remember how I set that blue portal earlier? Look, I can help blue from orange. So I don't even have to worry about the wall because we have telepipe cannons up. So if I see orange get overwhelmed and no one can help orange, that's my responsibility now. So let's add a sack cannon real quick. Did a slight misclick with the uh, leaping dodge. I believe you can pierce through these too if you use like a piercing round to shoot enemies that pass through. What do we have, a tower over here? Yeah, we do. I knew something was on the minimap. I fucked up there. I'm gonna keep rifle out because I need to put some serious damage into him. A typical ranger strategy is launcher for mobs, rifle for single target. But now that I have these rounds loaded, I'm going to keep rifle out for longer than I have to. I'll switch to launcher only when I have to. Until then, everything gets homing a mission for me. I could shoot these out of the air, believe it or not. Once they're in range of my attack. I can freeze barrier this before it even spawns. I'm just going to do it anyway, since we have three of them. That force uh, wall right there was fantastic. Now I can use a Positron Blast to hit everything that's stuck on the wall. Of course, everyone else killed it, but it's the thought that counts. Throw that there. Refill. Flashbang through the door. It's almost time to go attack. That should kill with three of them because its core is open. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go set a green. I know blue is corrupted, but I would rather get the movement so that I know blue has enough health. Set that up ahead of time, so that way we can move there quick. And I think I did start off on this side. I'm just gonna make that assumption now. Wasn't 100% sure though. I really need to pay attention, but it's kind of hard when you're also thinking of like tips and stuff instead of just passive leveling. So if I activate Hunter Physique too early, I won't have it for the final castle boss. And we have to kill at the same speed at the, or at least as fast as the uh, other side to open those gates. There we go. Impact to move and we can start our stat cannon. Let's do another. Should end it here. Huge.
I have one weak bullet to supply to this, even though it makes no difference. And so the time is 9.56 p.m. There's an urgent quest in four minutes. The reason every item is a question mark is because of Relit. So I'm going to take a handful of these and just go. Because the experience is worth so much more to me than any of the loot. As a new player, it might be worth, you know, checking all of this stuff out. Sometimes you can get a disc you need or something like that. EX cubes are worth a lot more. All I'm saying is I couldn't even sell this stuff if I wanted to because there is more valuable stuff for sale on my shop and there's a limited amount of shop uh, space. So for me, it's a slight inconvenience to even take the time. Uh, the reason that I have Relit on though, instead of having it off and just getting free EX cubes after each of them is because I use the appraisal system at the item techer to enhance appraise certain items so that I can have a better chance of having a lot of slots, eight slot augment. So the higher the slots, the more the value. And so on some of the best weapons in the game, if I could secure something with eight slots, that's a giant payday. So I will take that risk with the Rallet depending on what I'm farming for. A lot of the time, this will be off for me. But right now, it's on. Because, for example, if during this next urgent quest, I get a sword called Elder Pain Omega, and it's 8 slot, that's so much more valuable than getting it and it being 3 slot. So we'll see if I get lucky. Uh, past that, let's go see what I- oh, look what I got. Cleesis Booster, Chevelle Booster, Buster Metal. I was gonna say, let's take a look at my storage. Timed abilities, you can use these. Actually, mine might be expired right now. Yeah, Omega, Effect Duration. 16 minutes, yeah, mine are about to expire. I have to remember to reapply those. Let me go do that right now. We tell them thank you for party. Leave, and then I'm gonna requeue this urgent quest. Let's check my boost on the tree left. 66 minutes, that's more than enough time. Then let's apply these to my units. So 14 days, seven days, seven days. So you can request these from crafting, and I'll show you how to do that. Same for those crafted techniques. So you can search for crafters among your alliance, search crafter. We can search for a timed ability, which will increase like our unit uh, damage and sometimes give like a rare drop bonus. We can search photon art customization. I'm gonna go to the left and go to launcher. Look, there's divine launcher. And so we'd select that, and these are all the available crafters. So you'd visit their personal quarters, put in a request, and wait for them to uh, do it for you. Or you can search on the player shop, divine launcher slash C. That slash C stands for crafted. And you look at this, potency, PP cost. Usually the ones with the hand show uh, yellow, which usually means better. PP cost minus eight is so much better than PP cost minus five. So yeah, just choose the one that's the best bang for your buck. All right, so now we're doing an urgent quest. You are limited to, I think, two of these total on a character or on a ship. And even if I was fast at these, like as fast as possible, it's not worth multi-shipping. It's not worth doing one on each ship. It's just a good experience quest. It's a glorified buster quest. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, so, if you pick up discs to learn things while you're doing missions and whatnot, any disc over level 11 you can dismantle in your personal quarters using the crafting system to collect fragments. And these fragments can be sold on the player market, or you can use those to craft your own things. 
Yeah, Katsuno was great playing with you as well. Might have gotten the same win again. So just keep in mind that that's an option for some of the loot you encounter. You can sell it, dismantle it, or swap shop it. Or throw it away. Yo, that's a shiny version. I've never seen that before. She plays a summoner, which is the person who has pets literally like a Pokemon trainer. And the alternate colored pets are shiny. That one looks really cool. I want one of those now. <laughs> But I don't want to farm for like 10,000 hours. PSO is free to play. So I think this urgent quest is easier and better experience than a grade 3. So we're gonna go balanced. Done. Load my bullets. And uh, we're getting started here. There's no dash pads on this one? Okay, that's a really good distinction. I already feel slow. I'm gonna be using a lot of homing emission to walk for me. Like I said, Elder Pain Omega, or Hunal or whatever his name is, he spawns all the time. He has a pretty good drop table. Apply that weak bullet. Uh, so, common thing is to get tunnel vision on Elder and ignore all the other things. Not a winning strategy. Let's find those salamanders, mess them up, and when Elder pulls out the sword, we'll turn around and clap them. I gotta trust your teammates to also help. They go. I'm gonna set the pipe while we're chilling. I could throw a flashbang if I need to. Yeah, to recover meter. I put the Cosmos Breaker in their path to stall them. A Woolgarda, I could use a weak bullet on, but I'm not going to. That's the name of the enemy. With only a couple singles left. I'll use just basic rifle attacks. Now that I know where they are, I'm going to put the purple right in between both. That'll give us a good path back. I could even set green all the way at the top, but I'm going to save green for later. Now for fun, I could use an artillery cannon because I don't think that we'll fail this, fingers crossed. If we do, it's my fault and... I'll be very sorry. Yeah, that was not good. I should have placed it more to the right. Salamanders, priority. The usual strat. I throw a flashbang in the middle, keep them stunned. 
Now group up anything that just spawned together. Send that Cosmos Breaker ahead of time. Same thing. Maybe he even runs into it. Oh no, I wish that would have worked out. That would have been pretty cool. Alright, Buster's about to go in. Charge this up. We're going in. Oh, never mind, never mind. This is the urgent quest. It's double. So, this is a grade 3 plus, by the way. This is what it mimics. You have to do the Buster phase twice. Yeah, forget you saw that. A lot of shield bros. That goes out. I'm gonna get that tower to my left in a moment. I'm gonna focus on the mobs before the lances. Now the tower's open, we'll deal with tower. Three was the perfect amount. If you switch weapons, for example, while a Cosmos Breaker is traveling, it disappears. So sometimes you have to keep the launcher out even when it's not optimal because you set a delayed explosive or something. Uh, so one thing to mention is once you start getting at the very high levels of your main class after you've maxed out your subclass. So for example, I am a level 81 ranger. I can get the rest of the levels by completing the Enchanted Forest exploration. And the Enchanted Forest drops some amazing items, like way better of a drop table than this activity. And so even though this is better resources, better materials, uh, better experience than the Enchanted Forest or whatever it's called in North America. Maybe it's Haunted Forest? Uh, double check what that is for me, chat. But Even though Buster has better materials and experience, the Haunted Forest has better loot pool. I'm talking Bewitching Woods. It's Bewitched Forest Exploration. That's what it is. Yeah, the drop table can have items that range from like 50 mil to 100 mil on the high end. On the low end, you're of course gonna get the like 200k item, the two mil item, the 10 mil item from time to time, but it exists. They do have big ticket items. So we have three Buster Rams to care about. So I'm gonna try to stick towards the middle. Again, I'm using Impact Slider to move myself to where I need to be. I'll keep taking hits, that's fine with me as long as it gets destroyed. I think there's a boss on this one? Yeah. I need to restore some meter. Keep looking at the minimap while I put shots in. Cosmos Breaker has a massive effect for free, where as you're casting Cosmos Breaker, you cannot be knocked back. You'll still take damage, but you can't knock back. Did we lose the center Buster Ram? I think we might have. It might have got shredded by uh, that Salamander, but it's okay. We only need two, I think. I think it's only two. Yeah, okay. So Hunter Physique on, that on, and uh, I probably should have Rocket Rodeoed all the way there, because now I'll lose my weak bullet. But it's okay, I'll make it in time. I gotta remember on a Hunter, or on a Ranger subclass, not a main class, you do not keep the bullets if you switch weapons. So I'd lose my entire stack. A 
gonna throw a star atomizer to heal us as we go back. If he tosses a sword, I'm ready. So backing up in the cutscene, satellite cannon starting to queue. And Elder Pain, a Hunal, whatever his name is again. He's going down. I'm doing that right now. Explaining every little thing I can think of while I play. I want to use the rest of my weak bullets. There it goes. He just gave a sword. Last weak bullet. Oh no, he uh, ballerina twirled away. Couldn't get the lock on. Going back into combat after being knocked by pressing jump. I just instinctively spam jump, so... Yeah, if you get knocked in the air by an enemy, you can hit spacebar to recover from it quicker. You might be wondering why I'm able to instant swap my weapons as opposed to using the scroll wheel or whatever the weapon selection button like this and why it's instant. But that's because your numpad can instantly swap some pallets and some weapons. So I have remapped my keyboard to change some of the keys around to mimic a number pad. So I have the numpad on my left hand, if that makes sense. I still use WASD, but I like change tilde, tab, and caps lock to number pad one, two, and three, or four, five, and six, or something like that. And so what it effectively does for me is lets me not have to hit the number pad with my right thumb and play with the other fingers on the mouse. You can do that. That's a really effective way to play. The easier solution for someone just getting into the game would be chat shortcuts. You can do slash S pal to go to sub palette and slash M pal to go to weapon palette. So you can change those to your F keys. So that would be keyboard shortcuts. I do a mix of both. I do numpad. Oh, they already said it? They set it on orange. That's why. See, so yeah, I just know that the chat commands have a slight delay to them, and that delay isn't really noticeable if you're just playing for fun. But as soon as you start trying to get like the fastest time in the game at something, that little delay matters. Ooh, I got knocked out of loading my bullets, so I don't get weak bullets for this. So I'm going to go ahead and heal everybody. Throw the hunter physique, and we're going to battle it out normally. Yes, you do a client order with Zig to get those potentials to work. The Secret Life share is great. Still comfy after so many months of so 24 hour gaming sessions and whatnot. And so we completed one of them. We're at the 15 minute mark and we have one more urgent quest to do within this window. There we go, special weapon. Is it a sword? It's not a sword. I was hopeful though. It's a, a dual blade. Okay, so now this loot, since I know it's from an urgent quest, it's probably likely to be better. So I wanna take that. We take those. And party leader should be starting this up in a moment. It can, uh, they can drag me out 
of this activity. So be sure to grab your loot as soon as possible if you're not party leader. And if you are party leader, double check that everyone's either in the gate ship or that they say they're ready to go. So they're searching for multiple blocks, which needs my confirmation. But if they search on the same block, it doesn't require my confirmation, and they can drag me out of the quest. As you can tell, I went from 87 to 88 in this session already, and that's at the tail end of leveling. It's uh, exponential towards the end, so... 89 is a lot harder to get than 88 but we're almost there we really are so this short little session we're almost there and this is the harder end of leveling the earlier levels you're gonna fly through it and so once this subclass is 90 i need to talk to the uh, what is his name the hunter leader the hunter teacher his name is Oza he is near the class consultant in the gate area you talk to Oza and he has some client orders for you to do about hunter so on a hunter main you go kill some enemies and when you talk to him you'll get more skill points for your skill tree the final uh, client order he has is obtain something called hunter ex cubes and you get those for over leveling so that's reaching level 90 and then having enough experience to reach an invisible level 91. Once you reach that invisible level 91, that experience bar resets and you're given Hunter EX cubes. You need 10 of those to get four extra skill points. And keep in mind, I think at the first over level you get, what is it, five or ten of them in one go? It's not like you only get one per over level. You're given seven at 90. Thank you, 10 symbol. Don't forget to collect mana. No tunnel vision. Piercing round. Piercing round. That's how we do it. We got his infection form weak bulleted too. Sometimes you'll see enemies with like this uh, thing on their head. You can see it right there. That's called an infection form, and sometimes it's better than hitting the critical spot on some bosses because the critical spot is a lot more finicky to reach. Let's go see, is the Elder still awake? No, he dead. Since I have bullets loaded, I can afford to just waste homing to soften some targets, make it easier for everyone else to clear. Let's go get to blue. I love the fact that Aiming like this is an option in an MMO when most of them force you to tab target always. So having a way to intentionally place your crosshair on things makes the game so enjoyable for me, which is why Ranger is one of my go-to classes.
You know what? I'm going to send blue to orange right now since I'm closer to blue. And this time, I will make sure to hit this pre-spawn right. Pay attention to the minimap. Minimap, minimap, right. I only got one of the shield dudes. Let's try another. Any salamanders? Yes. Hey, that one was much better. All right, these, unfortunately, I don't think end or Positron Blast will hit them. No, it will. It will. It'll just straight say no to the shield sometimes. Depends on where you hit it. I was going to say, I'm going to have to ditch my weak bullets. I already read that wrong. That's okay. I'm going to get the auto lock in the back. And then deal with that tower across because it should be opening up. Nope, it's dead. Turn around because the phase ended. Alright, it's gonna split, right? Nope. I was wrong. Let's go to blue. Oh man, it's almost like we planned ahead for that. Now to orange. I'm about to set the orange port so that we don't waste all of our teleports going over to here. You have a limited number, by the way. Just I haven't had to use that many. If the whole team ports, then we'll waste them real quick. Let's uh, help this out before this force barrier dissipates. Put up the freeze barrier. Same thing here. And that made us all the way go back to blue for free. I'm gonna still hover around blue because there's no one else here. Wait, isn't something was supposed to be landing? Yeah, there it is. Sometimes you get confused with what variation of the castle you have, but you'll, you'll learn them all after a long time of doing this. Is it attack phase time? No, it's buster phase two. Let's go see where these are placed. Right, that's the right tower. So let's hover that down a little bit. I'm gonna walk my, oh my goodness, there's four of them. I'm gonna hover to the outside right one because I think that gives me the most uh, coverage of the map. For helping people. I'm gonna charge. Oh, disregard. We're out of there. That little red line on the floor signifies that they're about to send like a uh, a stun beam or something like that, and that will take me out like no one's business. Take out that tower so I don't have to worry about it. Pay attention to the minimap while I fight. Apply that weak bullet. Get out. Let's go. Start the end of track. Pierce if I have to. Red line on the floor. Avoid it. I don't see anything, so let's ditch that. Start setting some traps. I'll spread those out too. There we go. That went on correctly. 
And now that I'm out of bullets, let's switch to launcher. Never mind. I had the reload ready to go. This is the last one. That goes through, now we attack. If I recall, was I on right side of the cert? I think I was. Oh, right, right, right. It's first castle phase. I made this mistake again. That's the problem with doing busters immediately into this quest. <laughs> you get used to the threes instead of the three plus. But on the bright side, I do like really good DPS here. So. Hunter physique on. Now I won't get knocked out of the air. I didn't think it needed much more than it, so I didn't even, uh... Didn't even worry about full charging. He might send bombs in the air? It's Elder, that's what it is. I want these ads more than Elder. I want these bombs more than the ads. Target priority. <laughs> Look at what they can do to the castles, or to the towers. I got you, team. We still have a little bit more. There it is. Oh, no. I'm innocent. Let's find his sword. Oh, and he's dead, right when I got the sword lock on. Like I said, everybody likes to be the hero who kills the boss, and then they let everything on the map kill the towers. So I almost always default to just not dealing with the boss, even if I feel my damage is the best on the map. But then again, you could totally bystander and just everybody ditch the boss. It's happened. So just play off your teammates. Salamanders, priority. We'll flashbang him if we have to. What is that, a rest golem No, that's a bomb landing. So what I'm gonna do is drop a Cosmos and then focus on other things. I'm gonna ditch my Cosmos in a sec. When I level up Ranger, I'm going to have a different special round for Rifle. So that if I ever subclass again off that Ranger tree, I have extra rounds to alternate my Yasmin Cobb with. Is this all going in a two hour video? Yeah. I feel like this is something you could passively put on the side while you're grinding out some PSO and maybe learn something new. Long plays are super helpful to picking up a game. Sometimes these are like uh, videos people watch when they go to sleep. When they're like, all right, 30 minutes to kill before bed, let's learn about some PSO. Totally valid. I do that with some content creators about games I have no intention of playing, but want to know how to play. Uh, basically any video by Carcinogen. That uh, dude plays a lot of older survivor ho survival horror games and basically does something similar. Let's hit the pipe. I like watching Nor Northern Lions uh, playthroughs of Binding of Isaac, same thing. Just learn about someone who's Put a little bit too many hours into a game and uh, it helps make the game more enjoyable for you. I'm gonna throw a star atomizer for the team.
since Piercing Shot is a projectile, you can kind of have it slow travel. Right when he's available to be shot, he'll get hit. So. Ranger 101. Who else do I watch, or do I have on my watch later? Give me a sec. There's a couple of them. Let's go! Three of them. I have no idea what they could be. All right, so I'm gonna select all these. I wanna tell my party thank you. And uh, I'm not even gonna worry about picking up that stuff because I got four rares. Let's go. Leaving party, going to the lobby. Going to the Tekker. And uh, hopefully making some bank, but in reality, we're gonna get weapons only worth 200K. Leave it to me. And we're gonna end up dismantling them instead. But that's okay. No sword, so I'm already disappointed. But that rifle makes me excited. Probably gonna be a supernatural weapon, which is like a goblin or orc weapon or something like that. They're not really valuable. But let's toy around with this. We're gonna go light and lucky charm too. Wired lance? Yes, okay, so this is a supernatural weapon. Bomber, golem, baron. Cool, it's a five slot. It's only worth about 150K-ish. So basically what we spent on appraising it. I got a good look at it. Same thing here. Let's see about this one though. I got a, good look a salamander it. weapon. So yeah, part of the Supernatural series. And finally the rifle. A Judas a rifle. Okay, that's slightly better. It's still not as worth, but I'm gonna show you something. You can use that for an eventual upgrade called a Lumiere weapon. And me getting the rifle saves me a little bit of effort. Because as you can see, this enhancement level says 35. And as we learned at the very beginning of this video, some weapons have an enhancement level cap of 30, where you have to put five of the same weapons into itself. So let's pay attention to what this might have saved me in resources. I'm gonna go to the Buster Metal Exchange. Or is it limited items? Maybe it's Rising Weapon Badge 4. Yes, it's Rising Weapon Badge 4. So you can see these Judas weapons have an enhancement level of 30. So this just saved me 50 times 6. So 300 Rising Weapon Badge 4s. And look at what that would have been in terms of boosters. Right? So the fact that I got that saved me having to buy it. And I don't think it's that valuable. I think people sell them for pretty cheap, like 200k, yeah, 35. But early in episode 5... You are very excited if you got these. Uh, out of curiosity, 136k, 136k, and 136k. So yeah, that's pretty much where these are sitting. So I did lose a little bit of money on the appraisal, but I'm okay with that because the payout on like a much more significantly rare weapon with higher slots is worth that temporary loss. I'm gonna send those to storage and I'll dismantle them. Uh, actually, right now, let's go show you dismantling. So I'm gonna go to my weapon tab, sort by rarity. See, I have a lot of supernatural weapons. So I'm gonna highlight a couple of these and uh, go to my personal quarters. Max level for a mag is 200. The vid for the TWAB can be up right now. You know what, let's put it up right now. Vid for TWAB is live, so if you wanna watch that, it is live now. So I'm in personal quarters, we're gonna to go to crafting, do it yourself crafting, item dismantling, and we're gonna select all those weapons that we don't think are valuable. That seven slot might be, but that's okay. Worry about that another day. 
216. I could do the same there. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that unit. And let's double check if I have any rare items in storage that I've been grabbing while I was leveling. So I have an Avlita weapon and a Judas weapon. So my Lumiere is pretty much sorted. Let's check. Item market for, I believe mine was what, six slot? Let's see how much that's worth. 400k. So, eh. You could do better than that. Yeah, I don't really have anything too crazy right here, so. As I continue doing urgent quests in this character, though, I'm gonna get a lot of rares. So back to Franco's Cafe. And we repeat this whole process. We started off at level 87, and we're almost at level 89 just from that session. The expedition part of Revolcio weapons, I don't think is tied to difficulty. Maybe you get more progress for a higher difficulty. I just know that whenever I harvest, I naturally complete it. Because I harvest in Tokyo. Then I uh, finish out the Tokyo expedition farming for a uh, augment called Doombreak. Uh, just don't worry about what I just said. Don't, don't even worry about it. Just do expeditions. If you got alliance members, just grab a couple of them and knock them out real quick. Uh, also, also, this is huge. Recommended quest. I'm so glad you mentioned it because this would not have jogged my memory and I would have felt really bad not to include this in the video. So every day you get recommended quest. Nightfall province exploration. You can do this on normal, you can do this on super hard. It's gonna be similar. We're gonna do this on super hard. Except in current block. We can even grab client orders before we go in. So what a daily recommended is, is at the end of it, you get a gift, a little loot crate at the end. And sometimes that loot crate can have a key in it and a key you can use to access a special mission that gives you a crazy amount of EXP. I'm talking like you saw for the last hour, I did an effective level grinding method. This will give me a, a level like from 80 where I'm at all the way to the same place on 89. So an entire level from one key. It's that powerful. Of course, you have to have a lot of boosters on to get that effect, but it only takes two or three mi minutes to complete the mission. So if you think about it, that's two or three minutes of work to save an hour. It's not bad. So doing a recommended quest to maybe get a gold key is absolutely worth it every day. Also, it's PSO2 day. I didn't even mention that in today's video. So PSO2 day is on the 2nd and 22nd of every month. 22nd is for premium users, people who pay a subscription fee like myself, because I love this game. And uh, on PSO2 day, you get a try boost because it's PSO2 day. It's a free try boost. And so since we're having more e exp more rare drop throughout the day this is the day that i choose to level this is the day that i choose to farm all day because it's worth more so this is also why i haven't done the daily recommended because i didn't want to take too much time to do this when grinding exp might be more profitable but i'm not gonna lie if i get a gold key right now i'm gonna be really happy So the way this expedition works is you collect quest points. And as you kill more things, your quest points go up. And at 500, you can challenge an optional boss. Or you can kill more adds all the way to 1,000. All right, so he put his ice fortress up. We're going to float onto the ice fortress in a sec. Unless someone else already took him out. They did. Yeah, they got him. You jump on the ice block, then you go take him out. We're almost at the amount of points we need. Completed. There's a certain spawn limit of enemies on a map. 
So pay attention to that and careful wandering off on your own because you could ruin the spawns for the rest of the map. Luckily, I know I'm more than self-sufficient to clear out all these enemies and reach the final area. I'm trying to decide, is it worth walking across the map or should I just risk spawning? Spawning is definitely the call. Almost there, a couple more to go. That should be the 500 I needed. Yes, now a uh, telepipe appears that lets me go to the next area. Also, good night, then, symbol. I didn't load my weak bullet. I could have done that before taking the pipe, but it doesn't really matter because this enemy is going to get shredded. Also, if I get a rare drop from this, I'm going to be a little mad. I'll explain if I get it. Yeah, that, that Positron Blast right there is the better DPS. It hit her five times. So we just accomplished two things at once. I'll explain this. Also, that unit I just got might be worth a lot. Let's check the price. 210 10k right there. All right, so now here's the box at the end. A Tokyo bonus key silver. Okay, excellent. So I got a silver key. I also completed a daily mission. I completed all of them because I had a drink, I used a booster, I did a daily order, and I cleared an expedition. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of those in. And for doing that, it gives me another silver key. And so now I should have two silver keys in my inventory. Remember the swap shop with the EX cubes? Well, now we can turn our five silver keys into one gold, if I want to do that, of course. So let's go see what I have in storage. I might have some keys. I have one silver, an expired gold, and a gold that expires in 2021, so I'm not gonna use it. So that makes me four keys. Hold up. Yeah, four keys to turn in. So on this next recommended quest or two, if I get another key, I convert it to a gold and I turn that gold into another level. So let's go see what this next one is. Suppress Ogbron, Distress Signal, Investigation. I wanna do this one. You can do these at normal, it doesn't have to be super hard. Five silver keys are worth more as one gold, However, hear me out, this is my reasoning for it, this title of the video, the reasoning behind stuff, is A, it takes more time to do five silver keys, and B, if you're using really valuable high-end boosters, like 100%, which I probably shouldn't have used on that uh, expedition, I probably should have done this right here, stop booster effect, then select drink, so it stops counting down my boosters. Uh, if I'm using really expensive boosters, one gold is better because I'm spending less time in the activity, so the boosters count down slower. And if I have a lot of gold saved up over many weeks, many months, then that's the better way to do it. It's more time effective. And the way PSO works with the episodes coming out, if I know there's a class coming in the future, like for example, these are all the classes we see, and then there's also Hero, the uh, successor class, and then after Hero comes Phantom, after Phantom, Atoll, and after Atoll, Luster. I want to max out Atoll on day one. So I don't want to do any of this stuff. I just want to use Tokyo Keys and fly all the way from zero to level 95. So when you're doing dailies, be sure to clear out at least like 20 to 30 enemies to get yourself a S rank or A rank. You need an A rank to get the box. 
And also there might be some tier missions which reset weekly. Some of those involve break a box. Let's see what some of these tier missions are this week. Clear extreme quests, win a client orders, fix an augment, fish 15 times, kill King Besetan and Besetan Shooter, and explore the Bewitched uh, Woods three times. So sometimes it'll say like, break eight blue boxes. And so the best way to find them is just to do these kind of things. Just do it passively. Alright, I'm getting close to the kill count I need. I really want to show you guys what a gold key looks like, so I'm hoping I get one here. Alright, so let's go to the final area now that I'm confident I've killed a lot of enemies. And it should be a boss fight with an Ogbron. Load my weak bullets, feed my mag something. Remember, if you're starting from scratch, you can't just feed your mag monomates like I did. You gotta feed it something very specific to level it up. I basically just like stuck a shotgun in his chest. Nothing complicated. Let's see, hopefully I at least got an A rank. I did. Yep. Bonus key silver, let's go! Okay, so now we leave the lobby. We're gonna go make sure we have our tree buff. 16 minutes. Seven minutes on the boosters. Let's use a gold key. So we just exchanged all those keys. Now we have a valid gold one. Uh, sometimes keeping silvers forever to exchange for golds on a PSO2 day makes the most sense because if you save them for PSO2 day on that bigger buff, it makes more sense. All right, so we're gonna go to main quest, bonus quest, Tokyo Gold special mission, accept quest. Once we start this, we cannot leave. Otherwise it'll consume our key. So I'm gonna load myself up Jelen rounds so I get that bonus, that PP save on my PAs. Shift to premium, let's go. Refill everything I need. I'm confident I can do this within seven minutes of boosters. Confirm. I know all the spawns, so this is gonna be very fast. Do a cosmos here. Another cosmos. Now the other. Remember, being in the air makes me do more damage. Let's burn our gel in round now. I can technically be on rifle from this point on if I wanted to. But I want the EXP from my launcher. So killing that uh, Tagami creature, that lightning dog, 
is worth a lot of EXP. And on a Tokyo Gold Key, you kill three of them total. Plus, a lot of other enemies worth a lot of EXP. Can someone complete an extreme quest with only fists? Probably. Not every extreme quest. All right, so here we go. Two lightning dogs. And uh, Emperor Rappy. Or shoot in between them so the lightning dog doesn't go hard in the paint. And look at my experience bar grow. Last Rappy kill, and we're done. Some massive EXP. And we're almost at max level. In fact, if I wanted to burn that other key right now, I would just be almost done, if not done. I'm going to take Rifle from here. And I think that's it. Rifle can turn into a Holy Ray, which is super good if you can get increased EXP 3 because the Holy Ray has alternate history on it. On it. So I'll go turn that in real quick to show you that the possibility is there. So this is one of those tactical moments that an enhanced appraisal on a non-rare weapon makes sense. I'm not going to do it though. I'm just going to show you that it can be a Holy Ray. Holy Ray times 2. So if this had increased experience 3, which is much more likely on the enhanced appraisal, it's worth a lot more. I'm even going to keep that in my storage, just in case I need it. A no arc fever affixes in key missions? I don't think so. On PSO2 day, there's a special variant of the Rappy enemy that appears that drops a augment called arc fever that is very valuable. On key missions, even though they appear like arcs Rappies, they do not drop arc fevers. Welcome. Okay, um, I don't want to burn my tool key for later. I really do want to save that Tokyo Gold, but I'm so close to max level. I'm not going to risk it on the last daily recommended because it's very unlikely I get a gold from there. So I think Buster quested out is the call, but at this point, I taught you guys everything you need to know to do this process yourself. By now, you should have a stockpile of Buster Metals in your storage. So whenever you can afford it, if later units, get them. But then, whenever you have enough Rising Weapon Badge 4 and Klesis boosters, you talk to Zig, turn your Ivlita units into Klesis. And then, after very, very long term, you learn a fixing to put different perks on your Klesis units and start exploring the end game now that you're max level. There is solo aspirational content in this game. There are boss fights that will kick your butt. There are boss fights that will kick your team's butt. They exist. So this is kind of what we're leveling for is so we can have the best shot at doing those. Let me check my shop real quick. I'm trying to sell a really rare item worth like 84 mil. And I got two of these from the Urgent Quest earlier. I go see how much those are now. Probably fell in price since I had them on. We're going to search Augment 6, weapon with same name. I'm going to drop it down to 2.9. So they sell before they drop in price even more. Let's up that again. Drop that another 100k. Yeah, that looks nice to me. Hopefully that sells. Anything else I'm thinking of in terms of leveling though? Oh, wait a sec. Complete 15 daily missions. I think we I think we did it, chat. This is a weekly mission, and the reward is a Tokyo Gold Key for doing five of the daily client orders, which we have stockpiled. 
why do we have them stockpiled? Because if, let's say I take a vacation for a couple days and I come back and I don't have a daily boost, well, I have all these client orders stockpiled so I could just turn them in. So one, two turn in, three turn in, four turn in, five turn in, Tokyo Gold Key, baby. Let's go. Oh my gosh, it's a daily mission. I fucked it up. Don't do what I just did. I've made that mistake probably 20 times. I'm not even joking. So daily missions are what I just did. It's these. It'd be like that sometimes. Keep this in the video. Yeah, I have made that mistake 20 times. Come back anytime. I hear I thought I was being big brain. I was being small brain. All right. Send all that to default. Daily missions are take a drink, use a booster. Oh, okay, so those. My B, not daily recommended. Those are daily missions. Got it. It's been a while since I've had to be in this loop. Well, that means tomorrow I get my gold key for free, but it won't be PSO2 day, so it's still probably more profitable to just grind this out on blusters. And of course I'm leaving that in the video. That's way too funny. Welcome to our show. That takes some alliance orders so I can get points for my alliance. I'm here if you need me. Fine, I'll risk it for the biscuit. We'll do the last daily recommended for the gold key. Redemption arc. Distress signal investigation. Oh yeah, technically I do get the daily mission reset in five hours, which is still PSO2 day. You are absolutely correct, so I could stay up for five hours. Or I could get some sleep. Wait a second, I didn't pause the boosters. Okay, let's clear some enemies. I could even do this on range remain to speed it up because it's not really worth any EXP. I'm slowing myself down by being on hunter main. All I'm gonna say is sometimes it's worth letting other people make a mistake so you don't make the same mistake. Not like daily client orders are much of an issue considering I do them every day anyway and they're always gonna stockpile. But I could have saved that for another weekly mission which is why I get it confused. It says rescue the survivors. I don't think I've done this mission before. Oh look, I mentioned this way earlier. Data pods are super useful for learning some information about the game. It'll tell you some enemy uh, features. Wait, they're all outside? Oh cool, there is an outside area. 
See, this is what I mean when I said at the beginning of the video when I say just have fun and explore. When you don't know the systems of the game, it's like really magical and interesting, right? So don't fly through that experience. Take your time. There is no rush. Endgame content will still be there. This is a 12 year old game. There is no race to the top. All right, so that's not the exit. That's not the survivors. Oh, that's the exit. You can see. Nope. So this is the exit. I felt like that was a just a barren empty doorway, which is why I thought. Yeah, okay, so that one's the one. You can tell because of the mini-map. Oh man, there is a reason. I probably have never done this one before. All right, completed a team order. Get those alliance points. All right, surely I should be running into survivors soon. And this should be the area where it triggers. What am I? Oh no. Do not ever shoot the Lillipans. I'm so scared I might accidentally shoot them. I'm looking the other way and I'm probably Z aiming the other direction. This has potential to become a comedy episode within seconds. Because if the Lillipans explode, they go flying, mission failed, and I have to do this thing all over again. Remember how I made a mistake and was like, learn from my mistakes. Trust me, I didn't even learn from my own mistakes on this the first five times. Oh, I remember this mission now. Instinctually, like any other MMO, if you see this, you shoot at it. You don't know what it is. I killed that thing five or six times before I realized that you weren't supposed to shoot at it because the mission doesn't update in time to tell you not to shoot it. I am so serious on this one. I'm being very careful not to accidentally shoot him because I will almost one hit him. Success. Okay, so maybe I didn't have to kill so many enemies on the way up knowing that this was gonna be a survival at the end. He's done it. Oh, it's a Tokyo bonus key silver. It's not gonna be enough EXP to warrant using. I could save it for the next PSO2 day. But if I got a gold, man, that, that would have been it. So.
So I think I will end the video here. Because honestly, showing you that recommended and telling you not to shoot the Lillipan is a huge tip, I promise. So at this point, I've taught you the leveling loop of this. Let me show you a forest run, I guess. That's the next best thing. So you go to the attacker, you regular appraise, and you're done. No. I'm going to show you the forest. So let me go level to Ranger main. Let me go distribute my skill points real quick so I don't get clapped by the forest. And I'm going to go farm out a couple minutes of forest and show you that how that one works. Because that's an alternative. I could do my entire ranger leveling from 80 all the way to 90 by just the forest. Oh yeah, yeah. also you'll sometimes get a code capture. But a boss will appear before the code capture. And if you kill the boss before the capture is said, you lose. Because you're supposed to capture it. It's very annoying, but... All right, flash five. I might have done that backwards, but that's okay. I don't know where I want to put that one point. Maybe I put that in Iron Will, if I recall. I don't remember. That boosted from a 47 to 52. I kind of want the extra flash guard. Feel free to stop by anytime. All right, so let's, uh, now that we have our points distributed, let's do one run of the forest. So main quest, expedition, all the way at the bottom, Bewitch Woods. Accept quest, search multiple blocks and accept. And there is some etiquette that is uh, um, very, uh, very useful to know. Let's just say that. I'm gonna show you that etiquette. Let me grab a couple of these, a couple of these, a couple of these. Pop one, two, three. Remember what I said, these have really good drops in them. And I'm sure that my tree buff is about to expire. If I were going in here to stay in here for a while, I would take the attack buff, not the EXP buff, not the rare drop buff, the attack buff because I kill enemies faster. Killing them faster is better overall experience. Now, there is a case to be made if you have like really crazy gear. Like even for me, you could have really crazy gear and warrant taking the EXP. But I feel like I'm ruining it for the group. So I always take the attack buff from the team tree. All right, so let's talk about etiquette here. I'm going to show you the map layout in a sec. Alright, so pay attention to the map layout. We don't want to just run randomly. We want to do one big lap around this giant map. That helps with managing spawns. And makes it just very easy to follow for the group. So now that I'm on a ranger main, I hit like a truck compared to my hunter man and we're about to get a set of bosses apply a weak bullet to one apply a weak bullet to the other and try to get in a position where I can hit both of them at the same time but I'll fly around to the side put some piercing shot in both of them and ideally I keep doing damage to both at the same time better total DPS Traps when I'm low. I can drop these now. Some landmines. Pop one of those at a time.
Uh, so while I'm thinking about it, you have an option to bring AI characters, so bots, with you into activities like this. And do not do that. It is better to have a human player than an AI player here because the AI is super weak and doesn't really contribute much to the damage. So that's another part of etiquette. So etiquette number one, take the attack tree buff. Etiquette number two, follow the group in a big circle. Don't explore by yourself. Etiquette three, do not bring AI bots. And I would say etiquette four, party up whenever you can because parties get a boost. So because I'm partied up with people right now, we get 40% more rare drop. That eagle is flying. 40% try boost, got it. Oh look, it's Omega Hunal, our best friend from the Buster Quest. So good to see you. All right, I got the weak bullet on his uh, sword, so now the whole team can fight it. Now that I don't have to worry about defending towers, I can fight him as I should. Let's see if I can get some piercing angles, some double hits. Yes, okay. Nice, we got him. So there could be a lot of different enemies in the forest. Let me start. Uh, keeping in mind what weapons to pick up. I almost always default to question mark launchers. Uh, typically though, any units that drop in the forest, you want to pick up. So the armor. They have valuable augments on them. The higher the slot, the more valuable the uh, unit. A disc on the floor, if it's above level 11, or level 11 or above, and it's a technique disc, like a spell. I uh, find those very valuable because you can dismantle them into tech fragments and sell those tech fragments for money if you're not going to use them yourself. The reason I pick up range fragments is so I can craft range PAs myself. And I completely avoid melee ones because it's not even worth selling them because there's a lot of melee classes in this game. So I don't know if this group is selecting the best circle, but that's okay. Typically I'll organize this with 12 people and we'll be really, really fast at this. But for now I'm just trying to show you guys how a typical forest run looks. And uh, I may, if I get the right group, I may even humor doing this on my hunter. But I'd still think Buster Quest is the better way to do it. Buster Quest to 90 and then Ranger 81, almost 82, all the way to 90 through the forest. I'll get some sick drops. And this will basically fund this character for the rest of my episode five ship two career. Oh, stand still. That's a real slippery, uh, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say it. I'll get demonetized. I'm not even gonna say it. Completed. High slot weapons are sometimes worth picking up. A slippery snake, yeah, it has a snake tail. Thank you. Keep it PG. Oh no, I'm holding aggro. You can tell because you have this little symbol on the top left of the screen. 
on the bottom right of that box, it will show a little red symbol to signify that the boss really dislikes you. Why does the boss dislike you? Because you're doing a lot of damage. Alright, so these units are low slot. I'm not even going to bother taking them, but for a new account, take them and sell them. And this is kind of the gameplay loop of item farming. You clear some mobs, a boss spawns, kill a boss, rinse, repeat. So this is a good way to build up some revenue on your character. All it takes is one decent drop and you're in there. You can sell that, use that to do whatever you want with it, learn to augment your units, your weapons. I should probably explain how to get the Atlas weapon that I'm using. So by participating in the episode 5 story long term, the story mode, or by completing achievements called titles in the game, or by leveling up a weapon series called a Val weapon to plus 35, you're given a title for completing those things. And the title reward is a stone that is used to turn a Val weapon into an Atlas weapon. And you, at the moment, right now in episode 5, we're only allowed three of those maximum. Because those are, there are only three ways to get it. And I just told you that. And so, I found a very, very cheap way to augment my weapon. But this isn't, this isn't going to last forever. This is just a temporary thing. Favorite horror film? I liked Insidious. I thought that was a really scary movie. So my augments on this is Omega Reverie, Precision 5, Mark Courage, and Lucky Charm 3. Now normally you cannot get Lucky Charm 3 if you augment a weapon because that perk goes away. The reason that it stayed there is because I made two identical rifles and transferred these S abilities onto this rifle. That's the way to do it in short. I'm not going to over explain this, all I'm going to say is I use two stones to make one weapon instead of using two stones to make two weapons. Since I mainly play Ranger, this is the only Atlas weapon I really wanted. It ended up being cheaper though than buying expensive weapons to convert perks into this rifle. It was cheaper to leave it as is. And those are the perks that came on my Val rifle. Long term though, that is not the solution because we will eventually have better items to AUG than what we have now. So do not blow all your money on augmenting. Keep it budget. Best bang for your buck. Yeah, this can be a very min-maxi game. It can be tempting to go all in on augmenting and that kind of thing, but I assure you this game paces itself a little bit too fast for you to reasonably keep up that level of income. Psych! We're rich now. Now that's probably a, a supernatural weapon. Uh, me just spamming steady shot like that isn't really good damage. I was just reading chat and wanted an easy, uh, easy PA. Alright, uh, Ringa is a field boss, and a field boss drops a field soul. Oh no, I am frozen from the, uh, chicken with the snake. Uh, let me explain though. Field souls are used in augmenting to produce a very powerful perk. I don't have to explain any more than that. 
So Ringa is one of those enemies that qualify as a field boss. Push drop a field soul. Field soul expensive. So just know Ringa, expensive. A uh, Shrider, expensive. Jigmal, expensive. Bar, expensive. I could keep going, but uh, the best resource for this, and uh, type this in into Google, look at the description, look at the comment section, augmenting or a fixing simulator for PSO2. A fix simulator. Oh my goodness, that knockback knocked me so high in the. I'm staying up here. I feel safe up here. Augmenting or a fixing calculator or a simulator. And it will highlight, I'm gonna actually drag it on screen now. It'll highlight what a field soul is. So let me go show you this. All right, this is from arcslayer.com slash ability sim slash NA. We're gonna go over here to soul and these highlighted in blue are field souls. And so let's see if the Ringa dropped anything valuable. I don't think the Ringa did drop anything. If it drops units though, Field Soul expensive. Remember, this all changes in future episodes. This is all episode five knowledge. This is a level 85 Omega Hunal. So he's gonna be a lot tankier. Alright, swords out. Swords gone. Let's get some air. Swords out. Did I target the sword? Yes, I did. He's got the uh, Ganondorf scream. It was on the wrong pallet there. All right, let's get up close. He does a uh, attack where he spins like a void tornado around him that stuns you. It's very dangerous. I don't even know what these enemies are. Also, they're getting juggled so hard I can't even aim at them. There you go. I think I'm gonna ditch here in a second, rather than show you what the final boss is. The final boss is one of those castles that we already fought in the uh, Buster quest. So you basically fight a castle and that's the final boss here. It's not too crazy compared to the ones you've already fought, so don't be afraid. I'm just not running ahead because I don't want to ruin the spawns for the rest of this team. So consider that part of etiquette here. If you see a team diligently farming, do not ruin the spawns for them.
I should be on the tail end of that, so it should be hitting hard. And now I should pick up aggro, and he should chase me down. He should be like, I dislike you, Cammy. I don't like your content. He should be dead right now. Should be enough right here. Headshots, please. I only got one there. Uh, since this isn't my main character, I do not have a weapon called a Gunblade. Gunblade can be deceptively good against some bosses. It used to be kind of a joke of a weapon, but it got buffed in Japan, and we got those buffs during this episode. So do not sleep on the Gunblade. Alright, I'll fight these, and then I'm calling it on the forest. Which hat is this? This is called the Ramaral hat. You can get it with Ragul Memories, which I think you bought for cosmetics, but because this is from the old game, episode one and two, it was a no-brainer cost for me. The Ramaral is part of why I continue to play PSA. That's the, the character in class this was based off of. It's part of the reason I like Destiny. Having a, uh, you know, gun wizard, that's exactly what the Warlock is. Kind of what the Ramaral was. Was the support style uh, ranger. Yeah, Ramaral is the best class even still. Yeah, you're right. Voko, nothing's changed. If this is tutorial vid, remind all players to spin Masetta on Bastion. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. I still stand by it, man. Remoral's the best class in PSO. You can disagree, but that's fine. You can play a different class. I'll stick to what I like. I also transmogged my weapon, by the way. So this isn't what an Atlas launcher looks like. This is called an SSPN launcher. And fun fact, it's a misspelling. It's supposed to stay surface to surface missile, but this is a Japanese game. And sometimes there's translations and trying to make it look cool in English. But uh, <laughs> this is actually called SSPN in Japan as well. So we just call it the surface to sur surface, uh, what's it called? Um, portable nuke, surface to surface portable nuke. That's, it's not canon, but it's canon to me. So this is one of the biggest launchers you can get at the moment. Also, let me heal everybody. And since I made a really small character, I want the biggest launcher and the biggest rifle I can possibly get. Hey, remember how I thought I was gonna end this episode like an hour ago? Yeah, I think we're taking this over to Japan soon. Just to show you what's coming down the pipeline for this game. Yeah, don't buy a 400% rare drop from the AC shop. Waste of money. Not like I've done it or anything. I think your in-game time is more valuable. Alright, finish those. Let me tell them thank you for party. And I'm out. Alright, so remember, I got a rare weapon. It's probably a Supernatural series, but that's okay. Leave it to me. Yep, Supernatural series. Like I said, it's okay. We'll dismantle it for stuff later. I'll show you some of the expensive drops, though, that come from this. We got the Spread Needle. That's 30 mil at this moment, and it's 60 mil on ship one.
So we made it to level 82 on the main from that. You type in my chat command slash ms2 to go back to hunter. And I'm almost at level 90 on the hunter. I also have to remember I need to hit the over level for the cubes. I'll just save a uh, gold key for the future. So I really quickly want to show you my Japan character and I'll call it a day. Just know that a different server exists. So this is on Steam, the Fantasy Star North American server or the global server as it's known now. And then I'm using the tweaker to play Japan with an English patch. And I just want to show you that there is stuff coming down the pipeline so that some of the like tips that I gave you on this long play kind of sink in so you see where we're going towards. So I'm not giving you giant spoilers. I'm showing you where the gear is going. A live movie is currently being... Wait a second. I'm gonna get DMCA. Give me a moment. I have no idea what it could be, though. Boko, do you know about this? What do I have a top hat? Nope, that's not what I want. Well, I guess I really do have to go customize my character real quick, so let's do this right. Student uniform snow. Customize. It's been a hot minute since I've been that. I'll just show you character customization real quick. Really easy to do. We're gonna switch our accessory real quick. Change that to glasses. Yep, that looks right to me. Romarl hats. And my character looks somewhat normal to me. But there really is a movie on though. All right, so real quickly to Franco's Cafe. All right, so this is a giant rifle. It's a uh, transmog though, onto a, a, a still rifle. That's what it's called. So this has some nuts set up. There's a perk where it boosts damage against enemies affected by Jelen. And there's a class that comes later that pretty much makes sure everything is always Jelen. Much more deadly affixes than we currently have now. S abilities that we don't have now. So if you spend way too much money of fixing for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of mil on a weapon that is going to get out of date in a few months, not a smart investment. Instead, you could buy cosmetics. Make your character look good forever. Right? Right? I'm just saying, once we reach parity with Japan, we're at the same level, then it's worth going hard for uh, for good gear. Because then you can use that good gear to farm out stuff quicker. And then you can bank stand with better fashion. See, I, I got some wild emotes in the storage. Let's go see. Yeah, I've crouched too. 68 mil, bought it at 50. Impromptu Picnic, 41, bought it at 30. School Swimsuit, I scratched for that one, not gonna lie. And uh, Sexy Maid Dress, I bought that just because it was cheap at two mil. I have the better Maid Dress in my storage though, I have the Pure Maid. And uh, I guess I should say, if this is the first time someone's ever watched my content, I have a Tank Maid 
So I, I played Ranger today, but I have a support style magic maid that is a tank. Literally unkillable. I have some videos of that, so check my channel out. And uh, I'll reiterate that in chat. Yes, exactly, Rag Zero. You can always use your okayish gear to learn how to play the game. Uh, something to note for the future as to why we level up and why we learn to play. There's something called an expert requirement that could come to uh, to the North American server, to the global server. So to get the expert requirement in Japan as of now, you would do an extreme quest solo, complete that, and then you would do a trigger quest, which is an urgent quest on demand. And this particular trigger is a double boss fight, a boss fight back to back. And it's solo, again. So in order to get expert matchmaking, you need to be able to complete both of those. And your only reward for that is to queue with other people who have expert matchmaking. So what that means is that if you search public lobbies, you're much more likely to get a competent team, which means you'll get stuff done a little bit easier. How much time do I have out on JP compared to NA? Not as much. Let's go see. Just say player records, 219 hours. I have about a thousand on NA. So roughly one fifth the time. I should probably go back to NA for a little bit. JP for the casual, while NA is for the real hours? Uh, maybe the opposite though, Echo. It's just I have a home alliance in um, NA, and NA is kind of going through a time machine right now, which is why it's so fun to play. I went into Fantasy Star Online 2 blind, so I didn't know what was coming. I don't know anything about the game, and experiencing it without knowing any of that was so magical, so much fun. And I still am doing that. I didn't spoil everything on Japan. I just learned to play very well on Japan. I still haven't experienced episode five story yet. Episode six's story yet. And a lot of missions involved with both of those episodes. So I'm going to log on shift one real quick and I'll show you my playtime. This is my ranger. This is my force. Force is at 618. This is my tank made, by the way. It just happens to be force at the moment. You can play any class on any character, but just know that it costs money to get another mag. So if you stick to range, for example, you're probably only playing ranger or gunner or braver, maybe. Any sales made? Okay, I only sold a pumpkin rod, so not very much. Uh, let me show you what you can do with fashion. Oh, and we'll uh, call it a day. So here's a lot of looks I got. Let me make sure I grab all the right clothing items. Here we go. Let's do this right. So there we go. I got all of the looks. This is why you do the end game content. <laughs> you get the cosmetics. This is a global exclusive, the American flag. What if I'm feeling in a business mood? What if my team needs my help? All right, let me go see what else I have here. I uh, believe it or not, I think my other character has better fashion. I keep this character very simple. All right, yeah, we're not looking at Beach Remoral. That was for uh, the summer event. 
and it's staying in the summer event. This is the ensemble I choose for episode 5. I feel like this aesthetically fits the theme. This doesn't look too crazy to have like, I don't know, someone with a rifle in like the middle ages shooting at animated castles. This outfit looks like natural for that setting. And then uh, we have my Halloween outfit for the Halloween event. See, look at this one. This this one turned out really good. I put a pumpkin on my head. Small pumpkin. Fine, I'll show you the other character chat. The four hour video. But it'll be worth it. All right, this one has classics. This is my classic made. What if you gotta clean something? Let's go see the other ones. I think I don't have the outfit outer for that anymore. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Mega Mean hat. Let me go get the right stuff out. Nope, I just don't have it. So let me take out the uh, correct armor here. So this one's supposed to have like a, a orange jacket to go with this. It works, it does the job. It is a nurse outfit for when I play healer. This one's supposed to have a corpse jacket. So like a skull jacket, looks pretty good. Just go to the salon. I guess I, wait, does that work? This is one I use a lot. Cause my mom plays this game. I'm not, I'm not even joking. My mom plays this game. She has a max character. So that process you saw me go through, she already did that on her summoner. Summoner is like the Pokemon trainer of this game. And so anytime I see my mom on the server, I'm in this outfit. Here we go, got the right weapon camo too. So anytime I see my mom, I'm like this, hi mom, we're just studying the Bible again. And then this is like the nun, but evil. I think this one's supposed to have a red outer that goes with this. It looks pretty good for what it is, like an adventurer outfit. Oh, there's the orange one. I don't think I have the red one on this character. But the outfit would look something like this with red. See, that's not bad at all. Oh no, we're booted. Holy sh what's that outfit? Uh, I will show you the components right now and then call it a day on the video. All right, so here are the components of this. This is layered tank top shadow, dancer bikini, twin tail extensions, bunny eared ribbon, black flower wrist, rose pin bandana black. Let's go see how much the shorts would cost. Wait, let me double check that name one more time. Layered tank top. Shadow, 60 mil. So. It if an item was sold a long time ago, they're usually very expensive. However, just because it, it was sold a long time ago doesn't mean they won't resell it in the future. That's called a revival scratch. 
So that's exactly what's going on right now. Some of the absolute most popular items in PSO history for, for global are being resold right now. And so the price on things that used to be 400 mil is now 30 mil. This used to be 200 mil. It's 28 mil. Four hundred mil, thirty mil, hundred fifty mil, twenty five mil. Yeah, your eyes don't deceive you. The weapon camo, okay. Weapon camo is called Yod the Virgo. Seven hundred thirty-five k. Really good weapon camo, cheap price. I think it goes well with the maid outfit. Uh, crazy enough, I had an outfit with that orange outer with the Megamine hat that looked badass. And then you take the uh, Megamine weapon camo. Wait, unless I have that in my... You know what, there's an easier way to search this. Megamine staff. There we go. And so here we go. That's what people. This is what people see right when we start up a quest. They're like, "Damn, dude, this guy's got his fashion on point." No, not the bikini. We wanted to go nine. Yeah, nothing. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it formative. That's about all I got. Also, hey, silence. Take care, everyone.